So one of the fun things about building this series online is uh, I'm learning things too. And this video is actually inspired by a question from my friend Sean, who asked on the first uh, video whether we could make it so that when we pinch the image, the origin of the zoom is centered on the origin of the pinch gesture. So let me show you what I mean. Right now, where we left off last is just like this, where when we pinch, you see how it always kind of goes towards the center of the image, regardless of where our cursor is. That's kind of what he was saying. And so uh, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. And if I go ahead and kind of paste in the final answer here and show you what that looks like, it looks like this. So uh, as you can see, this is really cool. It's a lot more intuitive. You know, you zoom in and out exactly where your cursor is. And so uh, that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now. So let's go ahead and undo this, get back to where we were. And uh, what we're going to do first is just come over to this little picture I've drawn. And I just want to explain to you kind of the approach. So this is our little container. This is our image. And the blue diamond here is the center of the image, which is the transform origin. By default, when we scale in and out, we're scaling about the center of the image. So that's basically the origin of the transform. And let's just say that this green diamond right here is where the user pinches. So when the user pinches to start scaling, uh, let me just duplicate this. And let's say we scale up, you know, 25%, something like that. And right now, uh, this is what the final picture is going to look like. The center of the image is going to stay in the same spot. And uh, what we really want is for the scaled origin of the pinch to be where that original gesture started. So that's basically our task. It's to figure out how many pixels to the right and how many pixels down do we need to adjust the image uh, to account for the origin of the pinch. So how might we calculate that? Well, it turns out that this distance right here is pretty easy to calculate since we can find the center of the image and uh, React Use Gesture gives us the origin of the pinch. And then this distance is our scale distance. So if we could calculate that, we could subtract this and uh, we'd have kind of our final answer. So let me just say that this is our displacement. That's what we're going to call this distance between the original center and the original gesture right here, just like this. And then we kind of have this uh, scale displacement right here, which is the distance between the original and the scaled gesture. So uh, we, we need to calculate this displacement first. And so let's go back to the code and do that. So we need the center of the image and the origin of the pinch. So let's come back to our on pinch uh, callback here. And I'm just going to paste in some code. First, we're going to get the image bounds from our image ref. And then we can calculate the transform origin like this. Let me come back to the app and show you what this is doing. Uh, first, we want to get the coordinate of the x offset, which is just going to say, you know, from the image bounds right here, we first need to account for the fact that, you know, it's not all the way to the left hand side. So that's kind of giving us the leftmost coordinate of the image. And then we're adding half of the width. And that's going to get us halfway across the image, which again, if we look at our drawing, is going to get us uh, this distance right here. And then we do uh, exactly the same thing with the y. We get the y offset, which is going to be the distance right here, come halfway down right here. And this gives us basically the coordinates of that center point. So transform origin y and transform origin x give us the blue diamond. Now to get the green diamond is actually really easy because React Use Gesture gives it to us right in the gesture state right here. So we can just grab the origin property off of this uh, callback argument. That's going to give us kind of the x, y coordinates of the origin of the pinch. And we'll just to structure these into these two local variables, pinch origin x and pinch origin y. So now we can calculate the total displacement here between the original center and the original pinch just by subtracting uh, transform origin x minus pinch origin x. 
So this gives us that displacement value right there. Now the question is, how do we get this one? Well, it turns out we actually don't need to calculate this entire one because as we scale up the image, this distance right here from the original uh, pinch origin to the scale pinch origin turns out to be the scale factor times the original displacement. So let's say we scale this image from, let's say 100% to 125%. Well, this distance right here is just that extra 25% times the displacement. So that's a really easy way basically to calculate this distance right here. And that turns out to be exactly the adjustment that we need. So now that we have the displacement, we can actually come down to right where we're setting the crop. And remember, so far we were just setting kind of the scale in this callback, but now we're making this XY adjustment. And we're gonna say our X adjustment should be that displacement times the additional scale factor, which we can see right here is that 100% plus D over 50. And remember D is the amount of pixels that we have kind of pinched in or out. And that's coming right from this argument right here. So we'll set that for X and then for Y, we'll use the displacement of Y. We'll save this, come right back over to our app and let's give this a shot. Okay, so uh, we have some interesting behavior here. If I put my cursor over the books, we can actually see uh, it's trying to work. And towards the beginning of the gesture, it actually is focused on the books. But as we kind of scale up, uh, things get a little wacky. And this is because if we look back at our code, we're actually calculating this transform origin based off of the image bounds every time we run this callback. So if we look at our picture again, we really want this displacement to be based on the original size of the image. We don't want to recalculate that every time. Uh, so, you know, you might think we could reach for something like a ref here and store the initial displacement in a ref and then use that over and over again. That would work. But React Use Gesture has a handy little argument here we can use to accomplish the same thing. And that is the memo. So the memo is something that we can set to whatever we want. And if we return it from the end of one callback of our gesture, React Use Gesture will just pass it in again and again, just to memoize some values that we can use to kind of share across callbacks. So what we're gonna do is uh, set the memo equal to this object. And we're just gonna grab the bounds of our image ref. And that's gonna let us basically memoize that, that value. And if we return uh, the memo down here, we can get access to it on every single render. Now, if we just left it like this, we would be resetting this over and over again. So we can use this cool new uh, nullish assignment operator, which says we only wanna set memo if it's not already set. So basically the first time this runs through, we'll set it to this object, but then every subsequent render, uh, we'll get the memo passed into us and it'll have that initial bounds already set for us. So now all we need to do is come down to where we're reading the bounds. We, we don't need this anymore because it's in the memo and we'll just change all these image bounds to memo.bounds. And that way, uh, this is gonna be calculated using that initial value from the bounds every single time. So let's save this, come back to our app, and give it a shot. Check it out. Pretty cool, right? So we're compensating as we're scaling up, we're using the original displacement, but then we're just multiplying it by the new value of kind of our offset pixels, and that is uh, making everything work just great. Now let's throw in one more wrinkle right here. Let's go ahead and, and pan this over a little bit before we scale it, so our crop value is set, and then try it out. Okay, so we see a little bit of weird behavior here. And this is just because of the fact that we're not accounting for the potential initial value of our X crop. We can see right here, we're just setting the X value to kind of our adjustment. So all we need to do is account for that right here in our X and our Y. And basically we wanna say, you know, if we're starting off with a crop value of negative 214, let's just add our adjustment to that negative 214 since that's our starting value. So kind of just like last time, we want to capture the initial value of the crop so that we can use it every time we make this adjustment. So we're gonna come back here uh, right to our memo and we're gonna add a new property called crop, and we'll just set that to uh, the current value of crop, which is just in our React state. 
So we can just use a shorthand version of this. But now our memo has both uh, the bounds of the image and the crop as of kind of the initial run of the gesture. So that means we can come down to where we're setting X and Y and say, let's go ahead and say memo.crop.x and .y as the starting values. That'll make sure we're starting off at the right location and then we'll add our adjustment. So now let's come over and give this a shot. Check it out, pretty cool. I reloaded, so we're back on zero, zero. And uh, if I try this out, we see that it works. I can zoom in on the books or the popcorn. And if I go ahead and pan it over, we see that this works as well. So that is pretty cool. Now there's one final brain buster we gotta tackle here. If you've been paying attention, you might've noticed that as I've been showing uh, off our progress, I always kind of zoom in and then zoom out just to show that it works, but it really doesn't work yet. We have a little bit of a bug. If I were to zoom in and then stop and then start again, we see it doesn't quite work. It's kind of going all over the place. If I just zoom in a little bit, it'll be easier to see. You see that it doesn't really uh, work like you expect. And that's because uh, basically, just like before, we're not taking into account the initial value of the scale. So you know, as you pinch in and out, this is all a single gesture. And so the memo's there, this is running over and over again, but as soon as we stop pinching, we're done. And if we start pinching again, it's a whole new gesture. So we're really not taking into account the initial value of the scale in any of our code. So that's exactly what we need to do. So the first place we need to do this is in our calculation of the displacement. And again, just to refresh, the displacement is right here, and it's really based on the unscaled version of the image. And so we just need to come here and add an adjustment that says, let's go ahead and calculate the difference between these pixels, and then we'll just divide by memo.crop.scale. So that's gonna kind of give us the unscaled displacement. And if we try that out, we'll see it's a little bit closer, but there's still something funky going on. And that actually has to do with the fact that we're using this D variable right here. Now remember, D is coming from the offset. This is like the total amount of pixels we've ever pinched in and out. And if you just log it, it kind of makes sense. So if we log this and we start zooming in, you'll see D is just going up and down based on how many pixels we have pinched. But if I go in and let's say we'll stop at 107 and then I start coming down again, you'll see that offset kind of remembers where it started. So it's always the cumulative pixels. But because we're starting a new gesture and we're recalculating all this stuff from scratch, we actually only want to know the delta, the difference in pixels that they've uh, either pinched in or out. So we want to start that back from zero again. Now, if you've worked with React Gesture, you'll know that they actually have a parameter called movement, which is exactly that. So uh, this is the movement distance. And this basically starts out from zero on every new gesture. So if I were to destructure that and come down to where we're making our X and Y adjustments here and just swap this out with uh, the movement, check this out. If I zoom in and then stop and then zoom in again, you'll see it actually works. But watch what happens when I zoom out. Uh, something's gone wrong and our image is kind of moving all over the place. And that's actually because of something we did earlier in this series, where we set the distance bounds to a minimum of zero right down here. And unfortunately in the library, that makes it so that both movement and offset will never go below zero. But that's not good for us because when the user is zooming out, those pixels are gonna be negative. So if I were to comment this out right here, we'll see that this actually works. I can zoom in, move it, zoom in, move it, zoom out, move it and it works just like we expect except now we don't have that minimum and we can do all this funny stuff with making it really really small so we want to keep this minimum in here just like that and uh, instead what we're going to do is actually just derive the movement distance ourselves using the value of offset so uh, let me show you what that looks like first uh, if you come down to where we're setting scale we see that there's this relationship between scale and the offset distance right? And if we were to solve this for the distance, this would actually be the scale minus one, and then all that times 
50, right? These are kind of the same relationships, just solved for different variables. Now, what if we were to use uh, the memo.crop.scale? Well, this would give us the initial offset distance, right? Because that's based off of the first time we capture that in the memo. Well, that just means that the movement distance is equal to the current offset minus the initial offset, right? Since every time this function runs, we're getting a new value for offset. If we just subtract the initial, we've basically derived the, the delta, the incremental movement distance. And now we can use that just fine. It'll be negative if we happen to be pinching out, but we still get to use our constraint that uh, the offset never goes below zero. So let's save that, come over and refresh and see what we got. Can we zoom in on popcorn? Yes. Can we zoom in on the books? Yes. Can I move this and zoom it in and out? Yep, I can do it all. So uh, this is the final solution and it's pretty cool. I mean, just, you know, I hadn't even thought about doing this the first time I made this because I don't know, I was just working on lots of different things. And the fact that someone just asked a question and actually David, one of the maintainers of React Use Gesture chimed in with a code sandbox, explained this all to me. And, um, uh, the fact that you can do this with all of these primitives right here, you know, this library is low level, but hopefully, as you can see, if you get good with it, you can make some really powerful stuff. And I'm just struck by how much better this experience is. And I'm on a trackpad. It's even it's even better when you're actually using, you know, a device like an iPhone. Uh, and this is just one little extra feature. So I just thought this was really cool. Wanted to make sure I added this to the cropper. Uh, I'm going to link his code sandbox so that you can see kind of how he did it, which is basically the same here. But he also made me an Excala draw with kind of the breakdown of how he thought about going about this. So I'm gonna make sure to put that in the description. But uh, with that, I think the panning and the zooming is feeling pretty good. So pretty soon, maybe in the next video, I have to plan it, I'm not sure yet, but maybe in the next video, it's gonna be time to add Framer Motion and start animating some of this. And again, this is when a lot of our hard work's really gonna pay off and we're going to start to see some really native like smooth experiences come to this image cropper. So I uh, hope you learned something. Thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you in the next video.